Wednesday, 26th May, 1948. Early in the morning, we started our trek for Badri Narayana, a 101-mile trip that we planned to cover in five days. Descending five miles, we reach Tri Yogi Narayan again. I pray to the Lord to give me many more chances to climb their sacred mounts and to bless me with a consistent, ever-increasing Tevra Bhakti for Him. I am sure my prayers will be heard and that I shall never leave the right path. Here are some excerpts from his notes about the trek to Badri. Unlike the other destinations, the trek to Badri is laced with numerous chattis, resting places. Not having had good tea for a month, we stopped at every kettle on fire and felt the pleasure of steaming cups of light, milky tea sliding down our throats. Prices are too high for sweets. I stopped at a free dispensary where I got my legs with the fly bites bandaged with sulfonamide powder. In addition to taking meticulous notes throughout, Balan also kept a detailed account of all the expenses. For about two miles, the descent is so steep the road is full of pointed stones. At each step, it is like the feet are being scraped on this rough sandpaper. One feels positively a few inches shorter. My feet are so badly lacerated that I had to weep with pain at each step. And thus, dragging my feet, I fell behind the group. I began to think. Why does one have to suffer pain like this? Because pain alone turns us away from sense pleasures into those regions within the bosom where one can raise honest questions such as Who am I? Am I just this personality who either accomplishes or fails in life's battle and then one day, for no particular reason, just falls off? Death, the plunge into the unknown why should it be so? Is it the end? Is this whole scheme a mere thoughtless extravagance of nature? Then how does one explain a child prodigy, a freak? Absurd. What about evolution? Is it only the body that evolved from ape to man? Only the mind? Only the intellect? No. There is a Lord within us to whom belong the body, the mind, the intellect, because we say our intellect, our mind. So that Lord power is within us. The spirit, it too must evolve. Towards what? Towards perfection, towards itself. That is a fuller realization of the soul force or the life force of an individual. Therefore, it is in pain that such thoughts spark out, riddles are blown up, and solutions crystallize themselves to the honest inquirer. The pointedness of these questions and their meticulous documentation makes us realize how fitting that Swami Chinmayananda started his career as a journalist for what are the three qualities of a great journalist? The ability to look at situations objectively, the burning desire to question and get answers, and thirdly, a flair for writing, documenting in detail the answers found. Ever since he arrived at Swami Shivananda's ashram as a reporter, we saw how he constantly drilled the Swamis there with questions. Now we see those questions turning inward. And in the months to come, when the ultimate answers are revealed to him, we all know how many libraries have been filled with his brilliant writings, all for the benefit of those who come upon them. 
As they get closer to Badrinath, his notes come to an end too. Balan had so vividly described his journey for the last month and five days that the abrupt end leaves us all yearning for more. He spent the next 40 days in solitude at Badrinath. The enchanting and peaceful Himalayan surroundings allowed him to assimilate the rich experiences of his trip thus far. He spent long hours in reflection and contemplation. Thanks to a note that he made on the back of a book, we get a fascinating glimpse into how intense his sadhana must have been in those 40 days. <laughs>